Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Warren, Towson University's sophomore, and this is week 8 of my videos in philosophy and music. Now that I've tested various ways to portray my understanding of these essays, novels, etc., such as using the PowerPoint, talking simply, using avatars and others, I have decided from now on, because my videos are about playing piano, I will make sure I always incorporate playing piano to keep a constant theme going on. So, today's video is based upon the reading called Psychological and Mathematical Approaches from the Man, Games, and Play, Man, Play, and Games. The first quote that caught my eye to make this video was from Carl Bruce, this G-R-O-O-S, from the reading, and he states, Animals also do not play because they are young. They are young because they have to play. Now, what does this mean? Well, also in the, the paper that I found was that Another quote was that, along the lines of, was saying that uh, playing as a child is like work for an adult. So what is a game? We recently wrote a paper about a game, and specifically either gravitation or marriage. I wrote mine about marriage. And in the game, it's literally just squares and circles. But about this paper, it, it compares to it because it's a game that can be systems within systems, and it might not necessarily be a computer, but there's all these smaller components that are connected, interconnected, and related to each other. For example, I'm playing Trivial Pursuit. You have the board game. That is a component of the game. It's a square board. You go around the circle, and it has various pieces, and without those pieces, you can't play the game. Without the cards, with the questions, that's another component of the game. There's all these systems within the systems of each part of this game. Um, and a game can be defined, as I found from the paper, as many different things. It can be a game that you can be lazy, you can be physical, you can be active, you can be thinking mentally. It, it can be so many different things, but either way, it's a game. Um, and what is playing? Well, in the, in the paper, they, dis they discuss all of this about playing and what it is exactly. And playing can, a game can be physical, mental, or anything really. And I found that whatever a child enjoys is what they enjoy. Whether or not it's educational doesn't really matter. That's just personal preference. Um, and how this relates to music, well, music is very important with learning, playing, and gaming. Um, here, I'll play a song for you that has to relate to a game and see if you can figure it out. I just played is the song for the Jack in the Box. Now, for a child, this can be an instant fear of hearing the song because hearing this, you think, okay, what I, I'm winding up a little box, and when I wind up, the, uh, the Jack will pop out. Now, this is a game. It might not be a game to some people, but this is I would consider this a game. It may be simple, but it's still a game to a child. Now, after this section. I realized, well, what about video games? Now, you can find ways to beat video games or learn video game songs through the internet or YouTube, for example. See, playing video games is stimulating. Some people might debate that because you're just sitting at a couch staring at a screen like I am right now. But I find that learning the music in the game can incorporate how you play. For example, when I play video games, if I'm playing with my friends, I know the songs in the game because they get me so pumped up while I'm playing. It's like it affects how I play. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to have you guess another song. And some of you aren't going to get this, but some of you will. And that's a song from the Mario Nintendo 64 game that I've played before. Some of you might have realized that if you played the game. Another example is... And one article that I actually found that has to do with this paper, it's not from the paper, but it's from another article that I found. It's by uh, Jay Ryder, author of How Music Affects Your Poker Game. And in the article, uh, not the article, the paper that we read, they talk about poker and how it's mathematical and you can... It's, it's not just chance. Some people take it as chance, but it really, you can count cards, per se. Well, 
his study found that, and I quote, Poker players simply place a safer bet while they enjoy beautiful songs by their favorite singer. Now this leads into my next topic, which is about argument. Some people can argue whether this is a true statement or not, but based upon his research, he found it to be true. It can be debatable, but whether or not it's debatable is up to the reader and whether they research the topic to see if it's true. Um, for arguments, I found this very interesting because what I want to do is probably be a lawyer when I graduate from college. And in the reading they talk about um, games and I'm thinking, well this is perfect because games with children, even in adults, result in arguing. Even me and my sisters will play a board game and we'll get frustrated with each other saying like whether you're playing the right rule or if you're doing this correctly or not. And um, the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because I'm thinking how does this relate to piano at all? Well, there's quotes that actually remind me of the examples and the arguments saying what is a valid argument, what's fallacy. And some examples of quotes that have to do with music are, I sing, therefore I am, I play, therefore I am, etc. What does this mean? Does it necessarily mean, oh, well, I sing, therefore I'm a singer, I sing, therefore I'm the song? It's up to interpretation based upon your metaphorical values, I guess. Um, an example of a music or piano type thing has to do with a composer, I don't know, Mozart and Beethoven, I bring them up a lot. Um, an example of contradiction with a valid argument and fallacy would have to be um, saying that Mozart was better than Beethoven because Beethoven was deaf. Valid? Not so much. Yes, he was deaf at one point towards the end of his life, but that is simply being used as slander. It doesn't necessarily mean he wasn't a good composer at all, though it is a, a good fairly valid argument per se, but if you go to listen to Beethoven's music, you wouldn't think that he was ever deaf. But that is my opinion, so that can make my, my argument invalid. Well, that's all I have for today, so thank you for watching Philosophy and Music. See you next time.